Natsume Ono seems to be getting more and more relevant these days, especially with the anime adaptations of her work piling up, so I decided I'd begin getting into it. Not through her popular anime adapted work, of course, I'm far too much of a hipster for that. Instead, I went for her lesser known, cartoonier styled works, one of them far more obscure and underappreciated than the other. If you've not gotten into her work yet, then you'll be discovering it along with me, and if you're only familiar with with her more popular works, maybe you'll give her lesser known stuff a shot as a result of this video. First, it's worth noting that Ono is clearly fascinated with Western culture, and in these two works, Italy and America are at the forefront. Nonetheless, I've not really come across any funny misunderstandings of Western culture from a Japanese lens. The visual language is still very noticeably Japanese, but the actual content feels very accurate. Not simple, while while still not nearly on par with her really popular series that received animated adaptations, is maybe the most well-known of her simpler drawn works. It's a story of unparalleled darkness and sadness, delivered in an extremely tactful manner that doesn't come even close to being melodramatic. The protagonist, Yan, is inherently unlucky in more ways than one. While very simple and pure-hearted, he experiences horrible thing upon horrible horrible thing, as do many of the people surrounding him, and yet cancelling out the intensity of the plot's events is an extremely serene style of execution that gives a strange simple beauty and humanity to the events, with its impressionistic art style and delicately expressive characters. In a traditional sense, this is what art is all about. Not just hitting you in the face with pure, cold reality, but framing even the worst of realities in a way that brings them to a higher plane and gives them a kind of affirmation, something that only a truly thoughtful creator could. Further driving this point home is the out-of-order nature of the manga's chapters, based around the unusual chronology of the novel that the character Jim is writing, a supposedly fictional story that is in fact a thinly veiled biography of Yan's life story. Therefore, even in-universe, Not Simple is about a strange and sad tale being being delivered with an artistic flourish. Danza is a far, far more optimistic work, and I definitely don't regret reading it after I was done with Not Simple. Instead of being just one story, it's a collection of short stories with a common theme, that of relationships between two male figures, co-workers, friends, brothers, father and son. This manga offers a pretty large variety of ways that men can relate to one another and form a relationship, to the point where I was surprised there was no gay romance story. Especially given that Ono is a huge yaoi fangirl and writes boys love manga under the pseudonym Basso, most of the stories are very optimistic, with only one of them ending in a manner that is outright sad and another having a rather bittersweet yet still hopeful finale that just makes you feel good and teaches you to appreciate the smallest positive things that can come out of otherwise shitty situations. Aside from the cops and ice cream story, which is just realistically cute and lacking in drama, the stories introduce their characters and make you care for them in record time. This is achieved not through over-the-top idealization and exaggeration, but through good old-fashioned, down-to-earth relatability. You'll want to see these guys finally get along and feel happy for them if and when they do. The best praise I can give both of these books, however, is that they can actually alter my view view of the world on some level. Not simple to complicated, borderline freak show situations that are hard to think about in simple relationship terms and humanize the hell out of them. Dansa made me see my relationship with my father in a slightly different way and reconsider my view of the people that I see as just obnoxiously pretentious. The first thing you'll likely notice about these series is the art style, in some ways different from Ono's more realistically styled series, yet in some ways still very similar, it applies the basic facial construction of series like House of Five Leaves to a cartoonier look with more exaggerated proportions portions are in looser lines. While the designs of the characters are very cartoony, the way in which they emote is not. Which leaves you with big-eyed, big-headed, big-handed characters expressing themselves in very subtle ways. 
The default expressions of the characters have a very go-with-the-flow, what-will-be-will-be -be attitude to the world, which fits the tone of the manga extremely well, but that doesn't mean there's not a wide variety of emotions to be found there. It's just much subtler than the typical manga that is mainstream in the West. The simplicity of the art, though, makes small shifts in the characters' emotions pop out more. If there's just one simple line to define a character's mouth or eyebrows, then changes will become more obvious. What definitely adds to this is Ono's love of subtle, silent panels or even entire pages. A simple drawing of a character's subtle facial expression saying more than an internal monologue ever would. This is the kind of stuff that Gona Guy talked about in a recent interview. And what in his mind makes for a truly great manga, and I'm inclined to agree. The paneling isn't particularly mind-blowing at any point, but it's still very well done. It offers just the right amount of page space to each scene and gives everything a natural, readable flow. This compositional sense is fantastic, with the panels shifting from one cinematic shot to the next and framing the action beautifully. Screen tones are used very sparingly and effectively, never used to cheat shading into the drawing, and everything has a very hand-drawn look. At least, except for some of the backgrounds in Danza, which look kind of out of place and rough. It feels like they were traced from a 3D model without much regard given to how it'll mesh with the overall style. And what the fuck happened here? I guess she was going for some sort of weird stylized perspective, but it just looks like the upper half of his head is missing. At the end of the day though, most of it looks totally fine, and the fact that I'm trying so hard to nitpick should prove how great Ono's artwork looks in general. It's a very thematically purposeful style, with the technical know-how to back it and it doesn't deserve the childish or so bad it's charming tag that some other reviewers gave it. Hell, Anime News Network even shat on her far more mainstream House of Five Leaves style, so screw what other people think. These stories have a lot going for them, engaging narratives, fun art, and even some thoughtful insight on our daily lives. Even from reading these two lesser known works, I can already tell why Ono became a successful author and Dansa in particular, I feel didn't quite get the recognition it deserved.